Hey everyone, I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon for 30 minutes of feel good news. We start nine on the positive side with a story of healing. A new burn business is working to help service members and victims of traumatic experiences get through some hard times. It's called Valor Horses for Heroes, an equine based therapy. Our Ford Sanders has more details for us. He is huge, but he is probably the most gentle horse. It's a unique type of therapy. A way for people to process their traumas without having to completely verbalize them. It shows myself as a therapist uh, certain th certain things the client may need to process that they haven't been able to yet that may not come out in, in a traditional therapy setting. Kenneth Palmer and Casey Bennington run the practice. The two utilize horses in their sessions as a way to let people open up in a less traditional setting. They often know what people need before they do uh, and sometimes even more than a lot of times other people. They've been a huge part of our lives so being able to see them do things to change other people's lives and help them grow and heal and change is very, very powerful. They explain how these horses are prey animals. So despite their large size, they're actually more on the shy side. They are prey animals, so they're extremely perceptive. Every day, all day, they think about how am I going to kind of survive. So that makes them ideal to read people. He is over there probably with Connie. They're all over together. Palmer explains that he wants veterans and other service members to know that getting that needed help is okay. There is that fear of, of being looked at like there's something wrong or you're broken or, or you may not be able to do your job because of what you're dealing with. Both saying these horses have been instrumental in their own healing, so they're excited to see them work with others. Horses for myself, just like Ken said, were a really huge part of my own healing process and my journey growing up, becoming who I am recovering from life's normal traumas and the traumas that we don't want anyone to be exposed to as well. And that was Ford Sanders reporting no riding experience is required for any visitors. If you or someone you know wants to learn more, you can head over to WNCT.com for resources and ways to help support the practice if you'd like. After months of community support and donations, United Way of Onslow County's CHEW program finally has a new food delivery van. Take a look for yourself. The nonprofit launched a GoFundMe earlier this year to help raise money. With a donation made by the president of a local insurance and finance company, United Way of Onslow County was able to buy this new van. It will help deliver meals to people in need in the county. I'm super excited to know that I don't have to worry about if I'm going to be able to get the food to the children. I know I can do it now. I know I don't have an issue. United Way of Onslow County says last year the CHEW program gave out more than 23,000 bags of food. A popular festival is happening right now in New Bern. The award-winning fall festival Mumfest brings out a lot of people to downtown. There's more than 200 vendors on the streets. You can enjoy live music, a beer garden, amusement rides, and so much more. We've had a couple of hurricanes that have, have affected the event. And then, of course, we've had a worldwide pandemic that's affected it. So um, just being able to be able to provide a festival that's a much loved festival in eastern North Carolina to be able to help provide normalcy to people and be able to get out there and just have fun with their kids. Mum Feast will take place October 15th and 16th and Mum Fest concert will be on October 29th. Rapper Nelly will be performing pretty cool in Gaston County. Now one police officer is looking to change the game in the racing world. Caleb Costner is breaking barriers and changing the narrative one race at a time. He's the first law enforcement officer to race in a nationally televised event for NASCAR at the All American Speedway in California. I've always had a passion for uh, humanizing the badge and showing that, you know, even though you're in law enforcement, there's a human aspect always to it. You know, we don't always have a gun and a badge on our side. Not only is the community supporting Costner, he says he's behind the community. He says his mission is to show the human element of policing. In just one week, the North Carolina State Fair returns after being canceled last year because of the pandemic. Amani Payne shows us the variety of food you can find at this year's fair. 
fun fried foods making their return to the state fair, which kicks off next week after being canceled last year due to the pandemic. Chef's Delights making their return for the 22nd year, serving up a new dish, Atomic Tots. And every year, you know, I really try to make sure I bring in something new. They're also taking safety precautions, including wearing face masks inside their trailer, daily temperature checks, and contactless payment and food pickup. Any little thing that I could think of to just make it just a little bit safer. And even if I feel good, you know, if somebody else is hesitant, maybe if they see that and they're like, okay, you're really taking us into consideration, then maybe they'll come over and get in our line. Also happy to be making their return is Fat Boys Barbecue. Their first time participating in the fair was in 2019 before the pandemic. Now they're glad to be coming back for the second time, featuring a brisket and mac and cheese egg roll named the Carolina Cowboy Roll as their main attraction. The State Fair is huge to everyone that participates in any way, any form or fashion, and to not have it in 2020 was devastating. And we're really looking forward to everybody getting out and hopefully staying safe and, and getting getting a, a taste of uh, the fair food. Other creative treats vendors are serving up this year include a cornbread and chili funnel cake, a shrimp Alfredo stuffed turkey leg, and lobster dogs, among some others. Imani Payne, CBS 17 News. Lots of good things on the menu. If you want to enjoy some of the dishes during the fair, the fair goes from October 14th through the 24th at the state fairgrounds. Ever get stuck in traffic? Well, most of us, we've been there, and sometimes it can be frustrating. But there's a man in Pennsylvania who seems to make sitting in traffic a little bit easier. Taylor Toshev shows us how. Sitting in traffic can be miserable. People are impatient. Good morning. That's why Larry McMillan hey. <laughs> is trying to change that. I love people. You gotta love people to do this. <laughs> With a smile or point. Hey, how you doing? Whoa! Larry tries to put a smile on everyone's face passing by. And some people are watching when they ride up to me. They may be mad because we held them up in traffic. But when they get up and see me dancing and smiling, their whole demeanor changes. And that's what makes me want to do it more. Larry makes sure people get through the construction zone safely, but he's had to dodge cars himself. Definitely. Even other hazards. Bees! <laughs> I'm up here getting bullied by a bee. With an infectious laugh. <laughs> and dancing along to his own beat. <laughs> That's that music going on in my head. I make it like a little mini concert out here. Beating new hay to entertain myself. It caught the eye of Donna Rowe. There's always a bright light somewhere. You just have to look for it. And today it's Larry. But even Larry has his dark days. Over the past 18 months, he's lost people close to him. Sometimes it gets overwhelming, you know, but you can't let that defeat you. And he knows other people are fighting their own battles too. Instead of fighting negativity with negativity, I smile at him, I wave at him. I wave at people giving me the finger. I wave at people calling me names. I smile. With an inviting wave. Come on, buddy. The few seconds it takes to pass Larry is a chance for him. See, right there. That's what I'm talking about, right there. To make someone stay. That makes my day. Knowing that I can make somebody else stay. Hey, hey, hey. All right. And that was Taylor Toshef reporting his smile is contagious. If you want more positive stories, you can go to our website, WNCT.com. You'll see these stories and more under the nine on the positive side tab. You can also download our WNCT nine on your side news app. It's free on the Apple app and Google Play stores. You can rewatch our nine on the positive side shows too. Coming up on nine on the positive side, two musicians are coming together to make music despite being blind how the group called Inner Vision was created. People have gone beyond in different situations to defy the odds. Two musicians in Ohio with the same eye disorder are fronting a band called Inner Vision. Brad Johansson introduces us to them and their managers. At an early age, um, my mom had discovered that I could sing two-part harmony. Oh, I just felt the music in us. Sam and Janine have been making music together since preschool. How did two kids start riding to school to start singing together? 
Well, you're asking the wrong person because I don't know myself. Their managers know. We're kind of Lucy and Ethel. She's Lucy. <laughs> Lucy goes by Paula. She's Sam's mom. <laughs> Ethel, that's Marietta, Janine's grandma. Both the same disorder? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Retinopathy of prematurity. Yeah. In 1990, Janine was the smallest preemie to survive at Columbus Children's Hospital. And exactly one month later, Sam was born as a triplet, placed one door down in the NICU from Janine. Emergency surgeries left them both blind, but the families, both from Westerville, didn't meet until their kids were transported to preschool together. <laughs> well, we would just basically just sing songs that we heard on the radio. They both talk about this as divine providence. Yes, no it doubt, was. no doubt. It was, yeah. it really was. How else could it have happened? 30 years later, family members are still their roadies, helping produce two albums with a third on the way for the blind lady with cerebral palsy and the blind man with autism playing 100 gigs a year. Let it shine, let it shine. This one back at the assisted living facility they first played together all those years ago, as if by design. That is why I want to do what I do right now, which is play music, is to glorify him and um, reach other people. And I want them to see God. You never know who you're blessing at the time, because somebody might be going through something and they just might want to hear a song to minister. And you feel that's your purpose? Yeah. I see skies of blue. Was it divine providence? Wouldn't trade it. Why wouldn't not? trade, actually wouldn't trade the blindness because if it had not been for some of that, we would not have met some of the most wonderful people on this earth. Or just blind faith. There's no sympathy needed here. Mm -mm. It's all for a reason. Yes. Maybe a little of both. Let it shine. They are incredible, and that was Brad Johansson reporting. A violinist is working to inspire young musicians despite having limb differences. Adrian and Antoine plays the violin without his right hand. He uses a prosthesis to grip his instrument. In doing so, some say he's become one of the most accomplished violinists in the world. And get this, he's even played for the Pope and the President. He says he sees music as being the ultimate equalizer. Music only gains its strength by embracing what is different and, and special about every single person. He says his true passion is inspiring others like himself. Right now, he plays with the Grand Rapids Symphony in Michigan. People have aspired to reach new heights. One double leg amputee from Russia is doing so with mountains. Rustam Nabiv on Monday climbed Mount Manasalu in Nepal, the world's eighth highest peak. The climber lost both legs in 2015 when his army barracks collapsed. He used his hands to climb the new mountain. Last year, he climbed Russia's Mount Elbrus. Down in Florida now, one poet is writing his way towards a goal of one million poems. Yeah, one million poems. This is Giovanni Ciro. He started writing poetry at nine years old with his grandfather, and he found his passion. Now get this, he's already written more than 4,000 poems. And as he continues to write each line, it pushes him closer to his typing target. I'm not daunted because it's not like, it's not like, oh, if I don't do it, then, then like I, didn't, I didn't succeed. I'm already succeeding. It's like the whole idea is just to write poetry. But like, let's just, let's make some weird goal, some like crazy goal. And let's just like go for it and, and like not worry too much about if I make it, but let's, let's see where I end up. One million poems is a giant hill to climb for sure, but Ciro says it's a journey worth its weight in words. And coming up on nine on the positive side, a canine friend is helping people travel to work on public transportation. How passengers are reacting to a kind gesture ahead. Welcome back to Nine on the positive side. Getting to work on public transportation can sometimes be a headache, but in one of Europe's largest cities, commuters say a canine companion is lifting everyone's spirits. Tina Krause has more from London. 
It's the last call for the daily ferry in Istanbul, and this four-legged passenger won't miss the boat. <laughs> After all, he has a busy schedule to keep. He knows where to go, and he has a purpose. For a couple of months now, the stray dog known as Boji has been a regular commuter on ferries, buses, and subways catching the attention of passengers and transport officials. So it was quite interesting and we had started to follow him. They fitted Boji with a tracking device that revealed he clocks up about 20 miles a day and loves the city subways. He favors the middle part of the car known as Boji in Turkish, which is how he got his name. <laughs> this woman says, I saw him on the internet, so it's nice running into him. Boji's star power is soaring on social media, where fellow passengers post their favorite pics. This commuter says it's really nice to see stray animals among us like this, especially when they're so polite. You know, when the door is open, you have to let the people out first. He knows that rule very well. The pooch's popularity has earned him a free travel pass for life, along with a permanent place in the hearts of commuters. Tina Kraus, CBS News. I love that. Our canine friends this past weekend competed in a dock diving competition. Look at them go. More than 60 dogs participated in the event that was part of the Ultimate Air Games. They showed how much fun the competition can be for not only the dogs, but also their owners. Some dogs even jumping upwards of 30 feet. Four different disciplines of dock diving took place during this weekend. Dogs were given multiple chances to receive awards. They all should receive awards. <laughs> and they love each other. I've been here 37 years and I've never come across a situation like this. Last month, an animal adoption and rescue center in Sioux City, Iowa found two inseparable cats. One cat did not have eyes and the other was its seeing eye cat. But now there is a whole nother cat in the mix. Nine week old Trixie was introduced to the family in hopes of one day becoming a seeing eye cat. One year old Keller was born without eyes and ever since has needed guidance from her mom. But after a visit from the vet, it was clear the mom cat was not in good health. The Adoption and Rescue Center decided it was a good idea to introduce Trixie to this family just in case something ever happened to mama. Now the shelter is looking to find the cats a forever home all together. We know there's good news happening all across eastern North Carolina, and of course we want to know about it. Send story ideas to the email you see right there on your screen. Put nine on the positive side in the subject line. You can also reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook. Ahead on nine on the positive side, people across the country are bringing in the Halloween spirit a little early. We'll tell you how one New York woman is doing it with a blast from the past. It's October, which means spooky season is here, and one New York home is bringing in the holiday spirit 80 style. Check this out. Patricia Passanello decorated her front yard with more than 80 skeletons outfitted in all different kinds of costumes. You see them all there. She created different characters like the Karate Kid and more to mark this decade. And that's all the time we have for you today. But before we go, we want to show you a Barbie doll that's headed out of this world. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone.